Hey everybody, I am not Steve Aoki, but I am getting sober again. How are you? Welcome back to the channel. I haven't made an episode in a couple of days, uh, like a week or so maybe. I'm not really sure. Um, you probably know better than I do. But um, I am back today to talk about some substitutes for drinking. I made a similar episode last year. Um, if I remember, I'll put a box up there, but it'll be anecdotal if I don't remember then there won't be a box up there to that link. But uh, so let's talk about some, some substitutes for if we're gonna steep, if you're gonna keep going to the bar, um, and uh, how are you gonna just be there with all your drunk friends uh, if you're not drinking. So uh, first suggestion is um, to just not drink. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but um, remember, when you were a little kid and you had uh, you had lots and lots and lots of fun and you were the most fun and everybody was the most fun and then um, you know and then you got crippling anxiety through your teen years and you know you may or may not have been bullied and um, then you had to learn how to cope with being in awkward social settings and then um, you know alcohol showed up and then you're just like I like this this is really good I could be in a whole room full of assholes and not give a shit. But um, so now we've gone a decade or two <laughs> leaning on that crutch, and now we now we're seeing that um, you know maybe it wasn't the best idea to do all that drinking, maybe it wasn't uh, the best idea to um, you know lean so hard on that particularly poisonous crutch. That's fun to say. Um, so alcohol obviously is poison, right? We are poisoning our bodies. You wouldn't uh, drink any other kind of alcohol, um, but this one we do. We drink. For what? To feel better? Or is it habitual? Is that it? Do we associate drinking with a good time? Um, I know that when we associated drinking with a bad time, we probably said something along the lines of, I'm never gonna drink again, ever. And then, um, you know, and then the next weekend we were like, let's go drink all of the alcohol. And then you did, and then the next day you're like, I'm not gonna drink anymore ever again. So you know, and then so we make, then we make YouTube channels called Getting Sober Again, <laughs> or we watch them, whatever the case may be. So tonight, um, I may have mentioned in previous videos, uh, I DJ sometimes. I'm also a photographer. I'm uh, I, I'm out and about, and I'm a social person. And 99.99% um, .99 of the time. I was drinking or whatever. Um, so when I did my big sober stint um, a few years ago, I or a year ago, um, I started just drinking some mocktails. And um, first of all, let's let's back up. If we're going to the bar, right? Um, it's a little awkward for you, maybe. Um, if you're thinking about it, because uh, if you've ever been a bartender or a server in a restaurant, a waiter, whatever, if you've ever worked in a restaurant, um, sales are sales. It doesn't matter what it is. And if you're gonna sit at the bar and then um, the bartender's like, hey, what are you having? And you say, a ginger ale. In their head, they're gonna say, go fuck yourself. And then they'll say, but what they'll really say is, okay, and then they'll come back with the ginger ale or while they're filling up the ginger ale because it's right there, they'll just be filling that cup. That's what it looks like when you hold a cup. <laughs> they'll say, uh, you want anything with that? So uh, we getting some, uh, you want like a, you want some uh, Jameson to go with that or a beer or some food or anything that really costs more than $2.75. So um, my general rule of thumb is um, I tip. Ask anybody, uh, I like to tip. I tip the most, I'm the biggest tipper. Not really, but um, I do tip. And that is going to make the bartender's interaction with you so much more pleasant and make things so much less awkward for you um, during your stay there at the bar if you intend to sit on, uh, at the bar, if you're not gonna leave the bar, you know, chit chat with friends. Um, they're there to make money and you're there to have fun, right? So maybe meet them halfway. I'm not saying you have to go in there and slap them a $10 bill or a $100 bill, but give them something. So like if I were gonna go to the bar, which I'm going to go to the bar later, um, cause I have to do some photography with this camera right here. Um, I'm gonna go to a bar and it's, um, 
It's a uh, trap. It's a trap event. There's gonna be a lot of of, uh, of uh, trap style DJs. Um, and uh, I know all of the bartenders and the owner and everybody. And it is custom for me to walk in and within, I'd say, uh, a minute or so, I've already got a glass of a glass of tequila poured for me and slid down my direction like an old-timey saloon. And um, that's great. That's a great feeling because everybody wants to uh, go to a place where, you know, everybody knows your name. And uh, that's why we go to, that's where we frequent places because you know the bartender and you know everybody. So what do you do when you walk in and uh, besides go, no, don't pour that, don't pour it. Uh, I'm sober. I appreciate the offer. Uh, so instead of like screaming like a maniac um, at everybody, um, you could take that shot if you're you know, so lucky. Take that shot and uh, give it to a friend. Give it to a good friend. Uh, maybe um, if you are a male of the species and maybe if a uh, female is nearby, you could just uh, start the interaction with the freshly poured tequila and hand that off to the nearest by sitting young lady that strikes your fancy. Just a suggestion. You don't want to just be sitting there with that shot of tequila <laughs> and then uh, and then one somebody shows up and you're like, what, would you like this? And they're just like, I've had roofies before. Not interested. Good luck, pal. And so what are you going to do? Um, so in that instance, obviously, the obvious choices are just drink anything else um, besides alcohol. So there are, believe it or not, non-alcoholic beers, um, there are this the whole gun of sodas, Pepsi, Sprite, root beer, ginger ale, you name it. My personal choice, my favorite, my personal favorite is uh, non-alcoholic ginger beer. So um, it's gonna be in a bottle mostly for the most part. You're gonna crack the top, and we will go through the ritual of the fun, right? My mouth still works, my brain still thinks, my eyes can still see, my human body is still standing there and upright, and I'm still able to socialize. But one thing I'm not gonna be is impaired while I'm there. Um, will I have some, some anxiety? I might, I might have some anxiety, I might. I don't know why I can't say anxiety. I said anxiety and whatever else I said earlier, go ahead and rewind that video, tap tap, anxiety. Um, I get some anxiety, you might get some anxiety too, um, if there's, a hundred people there, or if uh, you're the only Asian dude with long hair, or whatever it is. But maybe also too, you embrace your individuality. Maybe you embrace everybody staring at you. Maybe uh, you embrace being the only one that nobody knows. And this is a good time to practice. What do you do with those feelings? And was it all in my head the entire time? Was everybody actually looking at me? Did, or did everybody just not give a shit because everybody was, oh, everybody was drunk. Everybody's drinking. Nobody gives a shit about me. Why was I being so, why was I so awkward? Why did I think that I needed this crutch to get through it? Another favorite of mine, so we talked about uh, all the obvious stuff um, in the ginger beer, is kombucha. If uh, you can find it, a lot of bars, um, I think most bars in the United States, probably 98.99% of bars don't have kombucha um, but uh, so it's it's a fermented beverage and there may be like little trace amounts of alcohol in them like small like 0 0.0 whatever um, but it's a tasty beverage it's carbonated it has um, some good probiotics already built in which is good for your gut health as opposed to uh, wrecking your gut health and causing depression and anxiety which um, Maybe you're familiar or not um, with uh, the, we'll talk about the gut system real quick. Uh, 70, they say 70% of your immune system is where? In your gut. That's right. Um, and then you, you've, you've thought about, so you've heard the saying, um, you, think, you think with your guts, you go with your guts. Um, a lot of your emotion is produced by all of the bacteria and all the microbiome in your gut, in your gut flora. Um, so this is a good time to do healthy things like repair that uh, microbiome in your gut health and your gut bacteria by repopulating with some good probiotics, with some good fermented foods like sauerkraut, some kombucha, um, 
I'm not sure what ginger beer does, but there's a shitload of sugar in ginger beer. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, the fun thing about ginger beer is um, the spice level. So uh, go ahead and grab yourself some Goya and then um, try not to swallow that awkwardly. Otherwise, it's gonna feel like fire is coming out of your nose and you may uh, burp, sneeze, and then giggle and cry all within 30 seconds. So good luck with that. Um, kombucha is not nearly as spicy and it comes in all kinds of different flavors because it's not ginger based, right? So you can have strawberry, you can have blueberry, you can have uh, pink lady apple. Uh, there's all kinds of different flavors. Um, and then so, being at the bar, like, I like to play pool. Can I play pool without drinking alcohol? You betcha. Um, can I, if I'm in a show, can I dance without alcohol? I sure can. I might not be inclined to, but uh, my ears still work and my eyeballs still work, so I could still be present, I could still be at the show. And then, um, you know, who knows? Maybe the people around you will be dancing and maybe you'll just feel the energy of the crowd and you'll just want to participate uh, sober. So, those are some some stuff with that. But those are some suggestions for how to replace your alcoholic beverages at the bar, and then also keeping in mind too, um, it is all about the ritual, in my opinion. Like, yeah, it's like the buzz is super good. It makes you feel a little loosey goosey. I get it. I trust me. I drink. I drank the most. Not the most, but I drank. I, I drink a lot and I drink often. Um, so when I would go to the bar, uh, my go-to move. There is a place nearby that has happy hour until nine o'clock. Sorry, I just went there. I was like, happy hour. Uh, happy hour until nine o'clock every day of the week. Um, and I was actually wearing that hoodie earlier, but I changed it. Um, my go-to move was to get a shot of well tequila. And you might be saying barf well is, is disgusting. And I say, I know it's disgusting, but it has the same amount of alcohol in it as middle and top shelf. So, I don't care. I wasn't there for the flavor. I was there for the feeling. I was there to uh, eliminate all of my social anxiety and to have random conversations with people I may or may not really care about and then hopefully get over that pool table or get over to that dance floor. So my go-to move was a shot of tequila and a beer to the face immediately. And um, I would uh, slam that shot immediately and then I would have that beer immediately. Hopefully this is not making you uh, think like, oh my God, I really want a shot of beer right now. Um, but sit with that temptation for a second. Realize, do you need it? What's causing it? If it's me, I'm sorry. Hopefully you're not going through anything bad and your crutch was to also deal with not only uh, social situations, but um, breakups and other anxieties and fights with friends and relatives by leaning on alcohol. But um, so my go-to move was a shot and a beer. And I would sit there until that shot and that beer was finished. And that would be roughly uh, 10 minutes. And then I would get another round. And then I would take that over to the pool table and I would go um, stand over there and I would drink my drinks. And uh, I would be feeling pretty good, pretty loose. I have only been there for 30 minutes now at this point, mind you. Um, and then in the course of the evening, an evening might only be, depending on how fast that's hitting me, that I might, I might only be there for two hours or I might be there for three hours depending on how my body metabolized that alcohol. On um, some, on good nights, I might metabolize that alcohol. Uh, I might do three shots and three beers and I might feel all right. And then I would hop over next door and grab a burger and fry or whatever. And then um, get myself home and get to bed and start my next day. But um, so now when I'm at the bar, I have my go-to's. I know where I can go and what I can drink at those places. I still have something in my hand, so I don't look awkward. It's not like I'm holding a glass of milk or anything. I'm still holding a, a bottle of ginger beer, and it looks like it could be, there's so many craft beers nowadays, who to tell that that's not alcohol? And also, too, who cares? Like, if you're hanging out with people that are giving you such a hard time, they're, they sound like shit people. Everyone's like, no, oh, what are you drinking? Uh, some ginger beer, not alcohol, what are you doing? No drink November again, yeah. Getting sober again. Yeah, so what? Uh, like, in, with all due respect, fuck those people. And, um, you should have more willpower if you don't. I mean, hey, we all make mistakes, right? Um, I'm willing to bet that some of you that are in uh, Sober October, or pff, Sober October, No Drink November, may or may not have had a drink or two during No Drink November. But, all that aside, just do your best, try your best. Also, too, don't be so hard on yourself. 
If uh, I also made another video too about forgiving yourself. If you made a mistake, if you drank, here's a scenario. Let's say that there are uh, 30 days in November. I don't know if there's 30 or 31 or 29. I don't know, I'm sorry. But um, let's say there's 30 days in November <clears throat> and you didn't drink for the, first te or for, for the first 15 and then you had a drink on the night of the 15th. And then you didn't drink for all of the rest of that time, for, all of, for the whole rest of the month. Does that really sound so bad? Now that is not a hall pass, that is not a pass to say like, so go ahead, tonight I think it's the 16th, but um, does not say go ahead and go ahead and have yourself a drink, because if you're like me, if I have a drink, I am very quickly going to have another one and then another one, and then I am going to ghost everybody and walk out of that place and go get pizza. That's another go-to move for me also, so if you're ever hanging out with me in public and then I just disappear, um, I'm probably snacking on pizza somewhere. I'm just telling you. But not this month because it's uh, No Drink November. So best of luck to all of you. And uh, keep on watching if you haven't already. Subscribe so that I can make money doing this. I'm like the only honest person on YouTube. I'm trying to make money by helping do all this for you. And mostly for myself too. And also trying to make from some friends. Some friends. So uh, if you want to be my friends, uh, comment below. And uh, like my video and uh, tell some friends about it too and then um, maybe uh, hopefully I won't you won't see me out at a bar drinking especially not tonight because I won't goodbye